Good morning, fellow pilots. And are we ready to go flying today? I am so delighted to hear that. And guess what? So am I. So where are we going to go flying today, you ask? Good question. Now, I had one of those... <clears throat> cryptic messages from Agent M, you know, Agent M. And he wrote, he said, I hate asking, but could you fly from E-I-C-N to E-I-M-E? -E? Those are both little airports in Ireland. He said, there aren't any red scheduled real life flights from E-I-C-N to E-I-M-E, -E, so you could make your own flight path, he said. Hmm. And then, could you try taking off in a 737? Hmm. It doesn't need that much runway. I'll bet you could. And then he says, Ryanair 186 can fly anywhere, anytime. Right? <laughs> Well, he got me there. He got me there because I have been saying that. So I had a look at uh, this airport. Now, I'm going to hit. Here's a screen grab of the airport. Look at this. Now, here is an aerial view uh, or satellite view from Google Maps of the airport. <laughs> yes, it's got one runway, 10 from one side and 28 from the other side. And if you look, Look very carefully, you can see the size of those aircraft that are parked there. They're Piper Cubs. Now, I looked at the specifications for this runway. It is 1,300 feet long, and it's only 27 feet wide. Now, ask yourself, 27 feet wide and 1,300 feet long, and we're talking about a Boeing 737-800 coming in to land there or taking off from there. Mm. Well, EICN is Kunag, and that's just outside of Limerick. And I did some checking to find out whether or not a 737 could do it. Now, according to the performance chart for the Boeing 737-800, at sea level, and this is pretty much sea level, this particular runway, with a takeoff weight of 140,000 pounds, that's 64,000 kilograms, the runway length requirement minimum would be 4,900 feet or 1,510 meters. Now, that would be empty. I wouldn't have any of that, you know, champagne and caviar on board. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, what would be, a, what would a Ryanair 186 flight be without champagne and caviar? <laughs> so the maximum takeoff weight is 155,500 pounds or 71 thousand kilograms. That's 71 metric tons. 71 metric tons. And it would be requiring a lot more runway to take off than the 4,900 feet, which is what would be required for an aircraft weighing 64 metric tons. Wow. So, 
That is quite a feat, and I'm not sure that even I could do that. But here's another factor that I should mention. Look at this chart. Now, this is uh, the specifications for a 737-800. You'll see that the overall wingspan is 111.88 feet, or 34 point one meters. The width of the wheels is 29.36 feet. That's two feet wider than the runway. A slight problem there, I think. And all I would need is a, a bit of a sharp crosswind or anything like that, and I would be literally on a field. I would be in the grass and on a field. And by the way, if you look closely at that aerial picture, you can see if I zoom in right there, those are cows. Those are cows there that are parked right by the side of the runway. I'm not sure that they would take too kindly to a 737-800 rushing past them, roaring as we do, and uh, there could be all sorts of panic from the local inhabitants and denizens of Kunag Airport. So, we can't do that. No, it's not practical. So, I wrote back and he said, okay, he understood. And therefore, how about going instead from EGAC, now that is Belfast City Airport, to EGLC, and that is London City Airport. So go city to city. And that seems like a pretty good thing too, you know. But London City Airport isn't an easy one to come into either, as we're going to explore in just a little bit. So, I've accepted the challenge. Agent M, Buckle up your seat, because we are going to fly from Belfast City to London City today. And we are going to follow a British Airlines flight, number 8753, 8753. Or you can put in BA8753 into Flight Aware, and that will bring up the history of the flights. Now, here's another thing that I was asked, not by Agent M, but by someone else. They wanted to know how did I come up with the starting stand and the finishing stand, you know, docking uh, in the flights. Where, how do I determine those? Very good question. Now, flight aware does post occasionally, does post the gates for departure and arrival. In America, they're always posted. And you can often find the information on Google if you go to flying a particular route, uh, a flight number, you put that in and it will give you the history and it will tell you oftentimes what gate it came into and what gate it left from. But a lot of times, Flight Aware doesn't always do that. So I use a program called Flight Radar 24. Flight Radar 24. And when we get into our pre flight, I'm going to show you how that works because it tells me a lot of things. It tells me where the aircraft originated and where it docked at. It also tells me the route. And when I look at it in the live, view. Yes, you can do that live view. It also tells me what the active runway is. Isn't that something? I'd like to know that, wouldn't you, before setting off? It's a good idea to know what the runway is going to be when we land so that we can be certain that that's what we're going to use. So, Agent M, you're on. We're going to do it. So, if you're ready, then let's go on into pre-flight. All right, here we are looking now at 
British Airways Flight 8753, and here you can see the call sign. This one is an old one, departed from Belfast and went to London City. So Belfast City to London City. Looking at the flight, it looks pretty much like it took off in that direction and then swung down over the top and came down and then made a straight in approach on runway 27 in that direction. Looking at the altitude, the cruising altitude was 37,000 feet, so we will do the same. Now, the question has been asked, and so I feel I should ask answer it. How do I decide what the departure stand and the destination stands are? Well, a lot of times that information would be right here and also over here, but sometimes it's not there, so I have to find it in another area. American flights seem to have everything on there, including flight plans, only in Europe. They're a little bit more nervous about giving that information out in case of potential terrorists, you know. So you have to sort of guess, or you use a program like Flight Radar 24. Here's Flight Radar 24, and this is live right now for London City. And it looks like, see this? There's a flight coming in to land right now and coming into London. And it just now landed. I wanted to look at this one. This is the playback of flight BA8753 right here. And you can see the route it came in. It, it came in at this point, cut across and then came into final right there. It landed on runway 27, took off at this uh, exit right there, and then came to rest at stand, and here's the stand number, stand 23. So we're going to try to follow this the same. Stand 23 is what we're going to try to come in at when we arrive. As for what it did to depart, well, I'm zooming out now so that we can go in up here. And I'm just, here we go. According to this, there it is, 7A. This is the stand that it departed from. Got a pushback. Then it took this route to go to the active runway. It had to backtrack a little bit to get to the end. And then it took off from runway 22 to make its flight to London City. We'll do the same thing. We'll, and that is how I find my stand information. All right, we're looking here at the airport at Belfast. Here you can see the, the wind is pretty much consistent coming in from 230 degrees, 12 knots, varying 200 to 260 visibility, 10 kilometers or more, no cloud, very good. Temperature is a chilly 10 degrees in Belfast, but VFR. Now, the runway for departure today then will be the same as the one that we saw on the historic flight, which is going to be runway 22. And if you remember, it originated right here at one of these stands, 7A. So we will do the same thing. Now, looking at our destination, here it is. This is the city of London right there, London City. Wind 230 degrees, 15 knots varying from 190 to 27. Oh, wow, we're going to have crosswind landing. Visibility 10 kilometers, clouds few at 2600. Temperature is a warmer 15 degrees. 
Q&H 1008, but VFR. Well, we already know that the active runway is runway 27, so that will be the one that will come in. And then right here, somewhere in this vicinity, is where stand 23 is, and we'll try to park at the same one. All right, let's go into sim brief. Let's make ourselves a flight plan. We are Ryanair and we are 186. And we are departing from EGAC and we are going to go to EGLC, London City. Ah, and it's giving us, <laughs> this is Paris Charles de Gaulle for an alternate. Wow. There's our aircraft type. There's cruise profile six. There's our registration. Departure 22, arrival 27. And we're going to put in here 370 for our flight cruising altitude. We are full. And we have one ton of, yes, champagne and caviar. <laughs> Here is the route that they've given us, and we'll look at that in a moment. And the route distance is 389 nautical miles. Now here is the full route. I'm just going to zoom out so that we can see it all. Here we go, Belfast swinging down over here, coming around over the estuary, and then coming in for a final to London City. If anything goes wrong, then this is our route to go to Paris and here we go. Charles de Gaulle is the alternate airport should things go horribly wrong. Hmm. What could go possibly wrong? <laughs> right. Well, that is our route. So let's go up here and we will save the flights. And then let's generate the flight plan. And here it is. Here's the summary of the flight. There's our aircraft, origin, destination, alternate. There's the cruising altitude. Airtime 108. Block fuel 7,665 kilograms. That is 7.7 .7 metric tons. And at today's prices, wow, that is a lot. And there's the route, the whole route right there. No dispatcher remarks. Ryanair 186 is our designation. Right here is the flight level F370. And this is the flight route that we're going to take today. We are flying to an alternate of LFPG should things go wrong. We're going to need to know the cost index, that it's six. We need to know the average wind speed and direction at our cruising altitude. There's the block fuel. Now the reserves are 3,662 3, kilograms or 3.7 metric tons. And 3,326 is the trip and taxi. No tankering is recommended. And right here is the full route, which I will post in the description box below this video. We'll need to know the wind speed and direction at flight level 200 for on our descent, and that's 20,000 feet. Here it is at flight level 150 or 15,000 feet and the flight level 100 or 10,000 feet will need to know also the wind speed and direction. I'm looking here at the winds aloft for flight level 390. The only other one was for 340, which is 3,000 feet below us. This one is 2,000 feet above us, so this is closer, so I'm going to use this. And it's saying that we'll have 
a takeoff into the wind at our departure, but then we're going to have cross winds all the way until we make our approach into London City Airport right here. And some fairly stiff winds, but not overly fast. Here's the vertical profile departure from Belfast City, climbing up, going to top of climb over here, and then descending into London City. This dotted line you see here is the tropopause. So we're going to be climbing above the tropopause today, and hopefully that will give us some stable air at our cruising altitude so that not one drop of precious champagne will be spilled on our flight. How about that? All right, time to go into Navigraph charts. Well, here we are in Navigraph charts and we click on flights, go to new flight, come from Simbrief, and there's the one that we just made. Go to our starting point, go to the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport and the gates for departure. Looking at the runway, it is just over 6,000 feet. So we've got more than enough runway to depart on runway 22. And for coordinates, we'll be at 7A. This is our point to, to start. And here down here, if you see this, it says, this gives us the geographic coordinates that we will need to put into the IRS for our starting point on the GPS system. And both of these are pinned at the bottom. There is no SID required for departure. Going over to our destination, we open up London City. So we've got the parking stands and here is the information. It is just under 5,000 feet. Uh, this runway. And here you can see the apron stretches all the way along the side. And if we stray too much to the left or to the right, this blue stuff, yes, that's water. So if we don't make it onto the runway, we become an instant flotation device. <laughs> and here you can see there is number 23, which is where the other one came in at. So we're going to try to man it, uh, come in at the same one. All right, I'm going to close that down. And looking at this, do the overlay. This is the uh, approach star, the standard terminal arrival route. That's what this is a standard terminal arrival route, or STAR for short. And it comes in over here to Jacko, and there are speed restrictions and altitude restrictions all the way over this area. So we have to be very careful not to stray. So I'm going to pin that to the bottom. Now go to the approach charts. We're coming in on ILS DME runway 27, so I'm going to pin it and then bring it up for an overlay. For our approaches, we're coming in on ILS runway 27 from Jacko, so I'll bring that up. And here is the rather interesting route. Ideally, we want to be able to come down here and then bypass these and come straight to that point and then make our arrival. So we might make a slight modification when we go into uh, programming the FMC and cut this little bit out in order to uh, get uh, a more streamlined route. Just like the other one, the other one, when they came in, they came into here and then cut the corner completely. So if they can do it, if British Airways can do it, so can we. So here's the information. 
that we need and I'll just close that up there close this and close the side ATIS 136.355 there's the city tower frequency the localizer is 111.15 final approach is 272 the 2000 feet is going to be the uh, approach coming in and then decision height we'll look at that at the moment Airport elevation is 19 feet. For a missed approach, it says here if we miss it, we climb ahead to 2,000 feet to this particular waypoint, and then we make a right turn and come back to the NDB right here. This is the NDB, uh, which is at frequency 322. We'll have to put that in as well. So here you can see there's the ILS 111.15. This is the ILSR, that the code underneath, the two dots and this, that's the Morse code for ILSR. And 272 is the uh, approach direction. Looking at the profile, this is the interesting bit. See, we'll be coming in at 2,000 feet at a direction of 272 and we'll intercept this point, at which point we then make our descent. And uh, it is a steep descent. It's uh, certainly not the uh, normal uh, one, but it's, uh, it's a fairly steep descent. We'll just do the best we can. Here we got the decision height and for standard and we'll be setting it. We are uh, class A. So 570 will be our decision height there that we'll put into the uh, information. So this is everything that we need right there. Look at that. And there are restrictions for speed and everything else going down. So we're just going to have to be very careful coming in that we don't go too fast because otherwise we're going to end up in those very tall buildings that you see around here. All of these things that are saying that there are things sticking up. That's the city of London. We don't want to run into the Shard or to the Gherkin or any of those. Okay, we are all set. So let's go ahead and make ourselves comfortable and we'll join you in the cockpit. All right, Agent M, are you ready? Then let's go. Ah, there you are, Agent M. Do come on in and take your seat. Now remember, you have to buckle up and get your seat arranged just right. So, here we are at George Best Airport in Northern Ireland. And we are right there. Look at that. Stand 7A, exactly in the same spot that the flight that we are following today departed from. And I have excellent scenery. I forgot to mention this earlier, but I have excellent scenery for both Belfast City and London City because Belfast City is made by Gary at UK 2000. And London City is also made by Gary at UK 2000. So excellent scenery is here today. In fact, here's a quick look of the scenery from our parking spot there you can see there's uh, traffic out there because we are pretty much right in the middle of Belfast itself and swinging around you can see that we've got mixed weather some cloud out there but we are right there at stand 7 Alpha and going over there you can see the terminal building and you should be able to see right over the top the sign that says 
Welcome to George Best Belfast City Airport, right over there. And this is pretty darn good scenery. It's very detailed. And arrivals and departure, they come from there and then they climb up our steps because everything is ready. Right, adjust the seat. Now I've been around and I've uh, kick the tires. We've got all the fuel in. I wash the windows. It better not rain today. It better not. It's not looking too bad at the present, but uh, there was some scattered rain in the area, but hopefully we won't make a mess of our very clean windows. Don't you think how clean these are? <laughs> okay. All right, then. First thing that we do is we Turn on the battery, make sure that we have enough volts and then turn on the fuel pumps and then we start the APU. I'm looking here, the low oil pressure light has come on. I'm looking here now for the engine gas temperature and the, uh, there it is, the auxiliary power unit is located in the tail of the aircraft so it's cranking up. And we need some heat today because it's not all that warm. It's only about 10 to 15 degrees somewhere in that vicinity. That's Celsius, of course. And that's not too brilliant. Now it's coming back, stabilizing. And in a moment, I'm looking for this light to come on. And when it does, I'll switch the power. Ah, oh, there it is. See, now it says it's zero. I've got it switched to showing for this, but as soon as I push that down, then it shows that we have 115 volts coming from the APU. Just like that. That's all it is. That starts the main cabin so we can get things ready. So I'm going to turn on now the left and the right IRS, which gets, of course, our GPS system going. I turn on the galley. I've got the emergency exit lights going on. No smoking. Fasten seat belts. I turn on the left and the right window heat. I leave off the probes for the moment, but I do turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps. And here I'm checking that the forward service hatch is open. The equipment stairs are down and yes, our self-loading cargo is already queuing up to come on board. So I'd better go on here and put the APU bleed on, recirculating fans, and there are the packs. And now the temperature is being pumped into the main cabin in, to give us some heat. So everyone is comfortable. Then the last thing I'm going to do is turn on the position strobe light there to steady so that the ground crew knows that we're in here and getting ourselves ready. So now all of that is set. The next thing that we need to do is we need to program the FMC. So the first thing I need to do is to check that the air rack is in date and that there's no problems with the program. Then I do press initialization and we are at EGAC, which is George Best International Airport. And we are at gate 7A. I'm not sure if it's in, but let's put it in here. So 7A. And it is. It comes right up with exactly the coordinates that we saw on the chart. So I'm going to put that into the temporary, then transfer it to the set position. Now our start position for our GPS is in there. So now I'm going to go to the root origin, of course is EGAC. And we're going to go to EGLC for London City. We are Ryanair, so that we are RYR, and we are number 186. So I put that in. Go to next page, and here's where we put in the 
the root. First thing is we do, we go direct to Duffy. So DU and FFY. And it'll be the top one right there. Then we take the Lima 10, so Lima 10, and that takes us to Ringa. R I N G A. Then we take the Quebec 3 9 so Quebec 3 9 and that will take us then to Etiga. So E T I G A. And then we go direct to INCOB. I N K O B. And then we take the Quebec 3 9 Quebec 3 9 And that will take us to NOMSU. N O M S U. Then we go to the next page. Then we take the Uniform Quebec 4. So Uniform Quebec 4. And that will take us to Listo. L I S T O. And that is our route. So now I activate that, execute, and we've got that in. Now I'm going to go to Fix and put in the code for London City, which is EGLC. And we will need a four mile circle, a 10 mile circle around our destination, and a 30 mile circle, just like that. Go to descent, go to forecast. Transition level, remember, is set by ATC, so I'm just gonna leave that as it is. And here I'm going to put in the altitudes for 200, for 150, and for 100. The Q&H at our destination is 1013. Oh, that's standard, that's pretty good. And then the information for 200 at flight level is 222 at 68. So 222 at 68. And at 150, it is 226 at 60. 226 at 60. And at 10,000 feet, it is 228 at 53. 228 at 53. And then execute that. Now I'm going to go to departures and arrivals, go to departures, and here's where we need to get our clearances and make sure that it is runway 22 that we are departing from. So I'm going to tune in to the ATIS at Belfast City, which is 136.62. Belfast City Airport Information Zulu 1241 Zulu Wind 272 at 15 Visibility greater than 20 miles Sky condition Few clouds at 5700 Temperature 15 2.5 Altimeter 1013 Landing and departing Runway 22 VFR aircraft say direction of flight All aircraft read back hold short instruction Advise controller on initial contact you have Zulu well, we have Zulu, and it is number 22 for departure. No SIDS for our route, so that we'll just execute that. Go to departures and arrivals. Go to London City. We're still proposing to come in on ILS runway 27. And the arrival star is Listo 1 Charlie. So we'll go down here and look for the Listo, there it is, there's the Listo 1 Charlie. And we'll just take this as it is, just like that, so we'll execute that. And then go back to legs. And now we'll have a look at the system to see whether we have a good flight plan. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to plan so it makes a change on here. And then I'm going to go through the steps just to see whether there's any breaks or discontinuities on these steps. And there's that uh, listo come down to LA. There's the, that one swinging over. And then coming up to Inlim, there's Jacko. I'm going to bring this up because that's where they make that first turn up. And it's coming right in on that one. Now I'm going to increase the range on this because I want to see how this is working. And here you can see it comes around all the way in and then makes it straight approach on that one without having any other program. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. We don't have to make any decisions at all on that one. All right. Good. Turn that back. And now I'm going to turn on the weather radar for on here. I'm going to set it for 20 miles on my range. I'm going to push data on here so that we can see this. And now I'm going to turn on the TCAS to see if there's any kind of activity around us that uh, we need to see. Over here I'm going to turn your terrain on and I'll put the data on for yours. Our departure heading is 218. So I'm going to put 218 for the departure heading in here, 218. And here, 218 as well. And I'll do 218 in yours, if that's okay. Okay, 218 it is then. There it is. Now, let's get our clearance, our IFR clearance. Let's see what they give us. Belfast Tower, Ryanair 186, IFR2, London City, ready to copy. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Lima, India, Sierra, Tango, Oscar Airport, as filed, fly runway heading, climb and maintain 7000, departure frequency is 130.85, score 6057. Ryanair 186, cleared to Lima, India, Sierra, Tango, Oscar Airport, as filed, fly runway heading, climb and maintain 7000, departure on 130.85, score 6057, Ryanair 186, Redback is correct, contact ground on 130.75 when ready to taxi. Right, we are cleared to 7000 feet, so I'm going to put 7000 feet in here. But up here, I'm going to put in our cruising altitude, which is 370. That's 37,000 feet, so I'm going to put 37,000 feet there. 19 feet is the elevation of the airport in London. I'm going to leave that as zero. All right, and then now that we have that in, I'm going to go to route and perform the initialization. Now our fuel is 7,665, so we've got all of that in. Our reserves are 3,662, 3, and the trip and tax is 3,326. That comes to 6,988, or 7 to round it out in 7 metric tons. Reserves are 3.7, so 3.7 goes in there into reserves. Cost index is 6. Cruise altitude is 370. Put that in. The average wind is 216 at 48. So 216 at 48. Put that in. Transition altitude is 6000. Is correct. I double click this and it makes the calculation uh, that we need right there. So execute that go to N1 limit. We'll take the 15 degrees outside that it is. We won't bother with D rates or bumps. Go to takeoff. We'll be using flaps 10. Double click the center of gravity and it gives us the 
Center of gravity is 25.5. The trim is going to be 4.62. One click on each of these three gives us the V1, the rotate speed, and V2, which is liftoff of 147. So I'm going to put 147 now into here. Good, got that. Click on Flight Director 1 and Flight Director 2, VNAV, LNAV, and we have a good flight plan. Arm the throttle and VOR 1. So VOR 1 and VOR 1, if you remember, is 111.15. So 111.15. Our decision height is 570, so I'm going to put in 570 in, there we go, right over here. So that will tell us when we get to minimums. I'm going to click to RTO. Your damper is on. Flight continuity light went out. So looking good on that. Right, everybody's on board, so I'm going to close the hatch and bring up the stairs. That's the sound of the stairs coming up. That's the electric motor, and it's putting the stairs and storing them in that compartment directly underneath the forward hatch. Isn't that neat? Now, when we do a pushback, we'll need to push back and have our nose go to the left and our tail to the right. So, are you set and ready? All set? Good? Pretty comfortable? All right then. In that case, we are now ready to get ourselves a pushback and we'll start the engines but let's get our request to taxi. Belfast ground, Ryanair 186 with Alpha ready to taxi by FR. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 22 using taxiway Alpha runway 4 contact tower on 130.75 when ready. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 22 using taxiway Alpha runway 4 Ryanair 186. Right, we are ready now to do our push back so we'll turn our nose to the left 90 degrees select the tug are you set now which engine would you like to start today the number one on the left or number two on the right it's absolutely your choice you want to start number one first we'll start number one okay then here we go carpet to ground right I'm switching this to generator one We've been cleared for push and start, tail to the right. Copy that, ready for push, tail right. Police brake brake, please. Parking brake is... So door lights are out. MCP's program, take a thrust as bugs, and good. Air alarm terms, check the take off fee. Anti-collision light is now going on. Right. Here we go. Here we go then. Now I'm going to switch engine number one to start. Over here the start valve has opened and I'm turning off the heat right now. So I'm looking at the N2 spinning up. When this gets to 24 I'm going to bring in the fuel. And it's coming up very nicely. 23 and 24. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to ignite and oh there it is, cooking, cooking, yes. And now for the low oil pressure light to go out. And it did. And I can hear the engines. We're getting a good start on engine number one, yes, very nice. Alright, I'm now starting engine number two. and. There we go, there's 115 volts on engine number one, switching to two.
start valve has opened, there's the N2 spinning up. When it gets to 24, I'll bring the fuel in for the right engine. Push back complete, Parker brake please. Parking brake is set, there's 24, bringing in the fuel. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature to rise. There it is, it's igniting, look at that. Now looking for the low oil pressure light. Thank you, gentlemen. Such nice people, aren't they? And look at that. It's coming on very nicely. Okay, and I'm now looking for 115 volts to appear up here. There it is. Now I'm waiting for this tick mark to go off to tell us that we have balanced power. There it is. Now I'm going to switch to the main engines. I'm now going to turn on the heat again, turn off the APU, and turn off the APU bleed. We're now running on the power from the main engines. And I'll click and go to flaps 10. Right, let's do a check. Generators are on. Probe heat is now going on, left and right, they're all clear. Anti-ice not required. Isolation valves correct, engine stop levers idle detent, flight deck door closed and locked. Recall is checked, flight controls checked, flaps we have green light, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake is RTO, speed brake lever down detent, ground equipment is all clear. So, before we taxi, I thought I could show you some more detail of this excellent scenery. Now I'm looking out over to the left, you can see the Bombardier uh, facility right over there. Look at all of the fuel storage tanks that they have, a lot of fuel storage. And that's looking out towards the estuary. And coming over to the right, you can see a flybee there, and another flybee. That's the, and see the traffic running hither and yon in the background. I lived in Northern Ireland for a while, and uh, worked not too far from where this airport was. Only then, I think it was an RAF airport. It was where the Harriers were assembled and where they did the training. But anyway, we have to go out there to the end of the runway in that direction uh, for takeoff. Okay, everything is, is set, looking good. I'm turning on now the taxi lights. All right, attendance. We are going to the active runway. All right, check around, make sure that there's nothing in the way, and let's go then. Very detailed scenery. By the way, my frame rate is 24, 25, 24, 25, very good frame rate today and this is made by Gary at UK 2000. UK 2000 are the ones who make and produce this scenery. Wow, there's some pretty fast traffic there. My goodness me, there's, there's speeding. Alright, we've got to turn out here now and make sure nothing is coming. When we get up into the, past the whole short line, we'll get ourselves a clearance to take off because once we're on the runway, we're the only ones that's going to be using it because we'll be occupying it. Six 
ready to go. Runway 22 IFR2, Lima, India, Sierra, Tango, Oscar, Ryanair 186, cleared for takeoff. Runway 22. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 22, Ryanair 186. Right, we're cleared for takeoff, so let's check everything and takeoff briefing is correct. To replete start switches are now going to continuous. Cabin is secure. All right, I'm now going to put on all the lights. The position is going to go to strobe and steady, and I'm starting the clock. So here we go. We're going to go and backtrack down the main runway down there to make our departure. And you can follow everything, of course, with the Navigrab charts, which are available at the bottom right. Rattle that middle line. Now, when we get to the end, there's a turn around on both sides. I'll swing into the left swing all the way around and come back facing in the opposite direction. You know, we may end up having a very, very pleasant flight. The weather's not looking too bad. Just some scattered cumulus, a little bit of high stratus, but not looking too bad. It's a chilly day, but, well, what can you expect? This is getting close to winter, you know. At least winter here in the UK. like this is the oh they've got some markings there for turn around which is good so we'll just stick to this and then make our turn Keep an eye out, of course, for any traffic. And there we go. And come back onto line here. Okay, now quick check, make sure everything is good, all instruments are good, clear to 7,000 feet, all lights are on, good, check, check, and right, all set, all set, then here we go, advance the power to N1, We have balanced power, toga button pushed, and we are now rolling. Got a bit of a crosswind. V1, rotate. Rotate. B2. B2. Lift off. And we made it before the end of the runway. We did all right. Positive rate. Gear is up. Off. And that off. 
Right, we're swinging on our departure. Climbing to 7,000 feet. And you can see our departure coming down. Our first waypoint is coming up. So, change the heading 127. because this is the boring bit but we make it more interesting because we have all of that champagne and caviar just waiting for you back there in the main cabin so go ahead on in and have plenty of it and there's also a good meal for you too they're going to take very good care of you and then as soon as we are on our final intercept for coming into London City I'll give you a shout and let you know so you can help me land at London City and not crash into anything. Always good, yes? See you in a little bit. come back on in and take your seat 
I hope they gave you plenty to eat and drink. Did they? Oh, good. And did you enjoy that champagne? Oh, I am so happy to hear that. Now, let me tell you where we are. We have just crossed over Babku. Now, according to the chart, if you can see here on the side, it says, do not proceed beyond Jatko without ATC clearance. <laughs> well, we have a slight problem because we have to be within 30 miles of the destination before I can contact ATC uh, because that's the system that P3D has. So we're just going to have to model our way through. Now we're coming up to a place called Babku, which is another waypoint, and then we're going to deviate from that to intercept the final for landing. I'm at 210 knots. I have the lights on, seatbelt signs are on, and I'm getting ready to make our turn, which is coming up, so, uh, from Babku is 262 degrees and then that will put us on an intercept for the final at London. The weather's not looking too bad. There is cloud in the area but it's not much and conditions are okay so far. Um, I will have to make sure that we do slow up because if I'm coming in too fast I will definitely overshoot that uh, short runway at London City. Um, well, hopefully, well we've got cloud now so I'm losing visibility. Also we have to contend with major airports around the vicinity such as Gatwick and Heathrow, Biggin Hill, Farnborough, Stansted, Luton, all of these are busy airports and if that isn't bad enough, we have Northolt which is an RAF base so um, there's plenty of aircraft flying in this area so we have to avoid it at all costs and not crash into anything. Right, we are now making our way towards London City, that's the general direction that we're going in now, and we're about 10 miles away from the 30 mile circle, which is the 30 mile circle here, where I can actually contact the tower to get clearance to land. So far, everything's been fine, there's not been any issues or any problems. So I'm going to switch now to the chart and there you can see where we are. We're coming in to intercept the 272 degrees approach for landing. Hopefully will make it not mess up, right? <laughs> of course you're going to land, you know. Oh, you didn't know that? I did, didn't I say that, that you were going to be the one landing? Oh, oh dear. Oh well. What, my bad, oh dear. <laughs> we'll do what we can. Right, passing through 6,800 feet. We're descending very nicely. We've got to come down to 2,000 feet and then we will be able to intercept the final. And the approaches are, it will be a 5.5 degrees descent. So it's going to be a steep approach according to this. We'll be 
be coming up on South End on Sea and in a little bit up there, but we're shooting straight down the estuary. The Thames is directly ahead. Our descent is holding. Just hoping to be able to contact the tower before we get too far. And the way it works with P3D is when I get to that 30 mile level, I should be able to then pick up the tower frequency and then tune into it but until I get to that line it's a bit of guesswork so I'm just looking for I've got the ATC menu here on my left so I'm trying to see the airports as they come up in another couple of miles we'll be London City June London City Tower and request full stop City Tower Ryanair 186631 miles east to Tango to land Line at 186 City Tower make straight in runway 27 altimeter 1013. Fly straight in runway 27 line at 186. Right, we are to fly straight in on runway 27 and land at City. So we have our turn. So now we need to get our speed slowed down. City Tower, American Pacific 6017, ready to go, runway 27, IFR2, cable I. American Pacific 6017, cleared for takeoff, runway 27. Alright, engines continuous. American Pacific 6017. Main landing lights are on because we have been in busy airspace. We're 5,000 feet and descending and the City of London is ahead. And we're on course. Right, we have, we've slowed ourselves up, but we're still holding course. We're now 175 knots. We do need to slow up even more than that, though. We need to be at Labno 166. So, let me intercept the speed. I've lost my MCP. Right, well, go to flaps ten. 
and slow up some more. I've lost my MCP. Okay, well. Do what we can. gonna have to fly this by hand. The whole thing is going to have to be manual. Coming up on lab now. I've lost it. I've lost all the connections. Hmm. Clock has stopped functioning. Oh well. Well, somewhere out there is the runway. I didn't expect this, you know. Got no controls here. Half of this is dead. Oh. And now what is happening?
I have control. Ha! For better or worse, I have the airport in sight. 2500. 2500, check. I have no choice. My. Maintain power. to intercept the glide slope but I won't be able to activate it I don't think but the runway is in sight so is the city of London and so are all those tall buildings to land. I can see the runway but I'm not lined up on it yet. I need to go a little bit more out here. We're 140 knots. We're at 1,000 feet and descending slowly. 1,000 flight slow. I'm certainly below flight the glide slow. slope. I can do about it. I have the runway in sight. I'm now lining up Light slow. and I can see where I want to land. Light slope. But I'm getting the glide slope because Light I'm slope. below it. We're going to do it. We're going Light to do slope. it. Light, light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow. Light slow, light slow, light slow, light slow. 100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. And reverse thrusters are on. Slowing down, coming 75, 60 knots. And will indeed. All right. Now let's look at the airport and see where we are, where we need to go.
Well, if we take this one, then we need to go to the right. Ryanair, one eight six exit runway when able. I can't believe it, but we actually made it with half my instruments Ryanair again. Ryanair 186, contact ground line 121.825, going to 121.825, Ryanair 186. Right, let me do the cleanup and I don't think the APU came on, but Right, we're now looking for 23, I think it is, isn't it? Yes, 23. <coughs> so we'll <coughs> go up here until... No, it's to the left. Down here is to the left is 23. And so, okay, we'll go to the left then. One, okay, now. I'm thinking if that's 23, it's occupied. And because this is 21. 22, 23 is occupied, so we will have to go down then and take 22. Now this is going to be quite a trick because I've not done this before. But I have to go down there and then swing hard to turn in. So here we go, making the turn. to make that turn to the right. right over there so all right we're here but we're at I made a wider turn than I needed to so parking brake is on all right, shutting everything off. And I don't think any of this is going to help me. Um, so let's see if this works. All right, and Engines are shut down. Right, we've landed. Well, that was definitely a first. I lost all of this 
and I lost this. All of this is is all dead. I don't know why. It's obviously a software related problem and it's disconnected something. So I had to fly the whole thing in manually without instruments to help. I couldn't I couldn't intercept the glide slope because I couldn't press the intercept. So there you are. So Agent M, you saw me do something I've not done before. Landed at an airport with a short runway that I've never had before. And I've never been into London airport below, not the city airport anyway. So this, uh, ha, we did it though. We managed it. What do you think of that? We did all right, didn't we? So I hope that you enjoyed the encounter and the experience. And uh, sometimes these things happen in an aeroplane and you have to learn how to take over and you learn how to fly an aeroplane. That's the trouble with 737s. Everything is so technical. Everything is run by computers. Well, when that computer doesn't work, guess what? You are the one that has to fly it. You have to fly it the old fashioned way. So it so happened that um, I was able to do that and we had enough controls left to be able to fly everything in manually, but without instruments. It was all visual, a visual approach. Actually, I'm feeling rather proud of myself for having done that. Anyway, thank you for the suggestion. I'll see you again on another flight, I hope. And um, by the way, this is London City Airport. I better, let me show you what this looks like. You saw a little bit of it coming in, but I want to show you the detail. See, right there, there's the tower. And I parked right next to a CityLink aircraft. And you can see all the details. Right over there, you can see the, the skyline, the London city skyline with all the, the towers, all the business towers there. And there you can see a boat, it's on the water. So that is definitely a, a wet area there. And all the way over to the right. The frame rate, is 23, 24. That's not bad. 23, 24 frames per second. And I'm using three monitors all set at UHD, ultra high definition. Pretty good. Right. Thank you for joining me today. And I'll look forward to seeing you all again on another flight of Ryanair 186. Same channel, same next week. Bye.